and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Kike Setien presented somewhat of a risk for Barcelona when they appointed him. His style of play at Betis and Las Palmas indicated a manager more than capable of bringing back the fabled Barcelona way to the club. But there were concerns as he hadn't done it at a high level and was unaccustomed to dealing with big personalities. And in the end, the risk didn't pay off. The man chosen to take the club forward is Ronald Koeman. But why Koeman and what exactly will he bring to the club? In this video, we take a look. And if you want to keep up with the latest Barcelona news or any club of your choosing, check out the One Football app. It's a great free app available for free through the sponsored link in the description below. And a shout out to everyone who's been able to support me on Patreon. If you want to check out the Patreon and get early access to videos and exclusive videos like why Messi is a tactical problem for Barcelona, check out patreon.com slash simple. And if you can't, that's absolutely fine. Now, let's get into it. We will first touch on his background and why Barcelona chose him, followed by his tactics, most recently with the Dutch national team, and finally speculate about what 11 and tactics we could see from him. Koeman fits into one of Barcelona's favourite categories in recent years when appointing managers, which is having previously played for the club. The theory is that it means that the manager will have Barcelona DNA pre-built into them. And Koeman wasn't just part of any Barcelona side, he was a key member of the Dream Team that was led by Johan Cruyff in the early 90s, going on to make 192 appearances for them while scoring 90 goals primarily from defence. So the hope is that he absorbed some of the knowledge from the man himself during their period together. The last two teams he has managed are Everton and the Dutch national team. At Everton, during his first season, he managed to guide Everton to a comfortable 7th place, only beaten out by the usual suspects. His fairly attacking style of football also allowed Lukaku to have his highest league scoring season to date. And Kerman was flexible with his formation, using the 4-2-3-1 most often but also accommodating the 4-3-3, 3-5-2 and various other formations. However, after Lukaku left the next season, the results went sour and Kerman was sacked. However, when Kerman and the Netherlands reunited, they brought out the best in each other. The first thing to note, which may give Barcelona fans hope, is that he's not scared of making large changes. The first thing he did was to help usher in a new era, without aging stalwarts like Schneider, Van Persie and more, whilst integrating a younger generation, featuring the likes of Matthias de Ligt and Frenkie de Jong. And this has come with great success, as in 2019 they were runners-up in the UEFA Nations League, which is one of their finer exploits since the 2010 World Cup. And tactically, perhaps this Netherlands side is a better representative of what he may look to achieve at Barcelona than Everton. Initially, he experimented with back three formations that often looked like this. However, his results were not impressive in this phase, with two draws, two wins and a loss. But once he switched to the 4-3-3-4-2-3-1 hybrid, which often looked like this, they found their groove as they got accustomed to the system. And he used a possession-oriented style of play, which made sense given the technical quality that runs through the centre of the side, with the likes of Van Dijk, De Ligt, De Jong, Wijnaldum and Depay. And although it is a possession-focused style, it is much less horizontal and pensive than a lot of other possession teams, as Kerman looks to balance it out with verticality to get the team back to front and through the thirds quickly. The way he uses his fullbacks facilitates this as well, as Dumfries on the right is very attack-minded, looking to move higher up the pitch early. Daily Blint is capable of doing the same on the left, but depending on the state of the match, he can also stay deeper on the pitch, looking to help relieve the pressure on the centre-backs, and this is often aided by Wijnaldum being willing to duck into this wide region to provide support. But Frankie de Jong is the key to the team, whether functioning as part of a double pivot or a single pivot, and Kerman values his ball progression with passing as well as driving it up the pitch on occasion, and he is very much the central hub through which a lot of the team revolves. Next to him, Daron is a much more defensive option, particularly in a double pivot, looking to hold his position much more and filter the ball towards de Jong and forwards. The role of the third midfielder varies. With Wijnaldum there, he takes up a much more box-to-box -box role, doing a lot of the legwork on the right, particularly as Ryan Barbel is getting on in age and at times needs a lower defensive workload. 
However, we have seen him off for van der Beek at times, who, although a central midfielder, can push up much higher to join the attack, which is particularly applicable if a midfield shifts to a 4-2-3-1. And this also correlates to the role of the forward, Memphis Depay. Depay is not a natural forward, although if there is space behind a high line, he can look to make the run. But for the majority of times, he functions as a false nine, dropping in to connect the play while leaving space in the central zone. So, when van der Beek plays in this region, he is adept at immediately moving higher to occupy their vacated space at times. However, the wingers are perfectly capable of filling this role, and Barbo particularly, as the inverted winger, often makes this movement. Bergwijn can do the same, but often also tucks into the half space to provide even more room for Dumfries to overlap when needed to create chances, whilst increasing the central overload. So what could his Barcelona side look like? The good news for Barcelona is that Koeman is a big fan of using young players as we have seen with the young Zlatan and Schneider at Ajax, James Ward-Prowse at Southampton and Barkley and Lukaku at Everton. So this may open the door for the likes of Ricky Puch, Ansu Fati, Junior Firpo and more at Barcelona. Without having the transfers confirmed, at the moment it seems that a 4-3-3 would be the obvious option for him. The aging Alba could share time with Firpo and if Eric Garcia does come in, he and Pique could share game time as well. Midfield would be interesting, as at the pivot role, Busquets, De Jong and Pjanic are all candidates. Perhaps the most likely scenario is De Jong being a fixture, and if he's in the pivot, Pjanic could play ahead of him. But if he plays wider, then we could see Pjanic or Busquets in the pivot role. And if Busquets takes up the role, Pjanic could play the remaining midfield role. However, in the past, we have seen that Kerman doesn't mind an out-and-out 10, so could this open up a position for Coutinho or Ricky Puch to slot into? Or this could allow Messi to take up a new role. While with the front three, could we see Messi return to his preferred false nine position, as Depay does with the national team, which would allow Griezmann and Dembele wide? It is a possibility. But how do you think Kerman will line up? And do you see him being a success for Barcelona? Comment down below. And I would like to give a massive shout out to my current Patreons, including Asin Akume, Matt R, Piotr Olinkovic, Ali Kamba, Zaini Zain, Soccer Down Here, and Yi Jiang Wang. But that's all for today, and remember, keep it simple.